Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's Maurice back again with another video. I know I took a little hiatus, so I'm gonna have to ask y'all to forgive me for being away from the screen for so long. <laughs> but it's mostly just life. I'm all right. I promise. You know, it, it, it's all gonna be okay. But you know, we've been having a lot of good news from Fantasy Flight for Marvel Champions. I know that we're kind of in a hiatus with the, uh, I guess, with new content that's coming out anytime soon. I think the earliest that we'll see something will be the um, the new X-Force box that's coming out. I think it's in August. So we still have a few months. We got about three months um, left of waiting around <laughs> before we can get our hands on it. Uh, but I'm okay with that. I think that it's nice to kind of have a break from the amount of stuff that's been going on with Marvel Champions. I think it's, it's good and healthy for Marvel Champions. Um, I know that there are a few games that's coming out that may be uh, in competition with Marvel Champions. So I think this will give the designers kind of a break and um, just kind of direction for themselves on how they want to continue going with Marvel Champions because it's, you know, it's a game that has a lot of hype around it. It's a game that has a lot of community and support. So they got a lot that's going on. So I'm, I'm excited that we are still getting news, even though they're kind of taking their time with releasing things. I think that it's just fine that they are taking their time because I think it'll, in the long run, this will be far better for the game than consistently trying to reach out things to reach a demand that's, that's there, but can be kind of on hold for a little bit. But that's neither here nor there. Today, we're going to talk about Psylocke, and I'll be going over Angel and the uh, X-Force box as well as time goes on. I I have those I, throughout the rest of the week as well. So, um, But today, I just wanted to start with Psylocke. I know that uh, she's uh, one of the newer ones that were announced. I think Angel was announced like a week after her, but I'll go ahead and start with her. I, I am a huge fan of Psylocke, so... I uh, wanted to dive in first with her to see what's going on. So we see here that uh, she's starting off with uh, three, rec uh, three recovery. Uh, she's a mutant psionic. I'm glad that they are diving more into psionic. It's nice to see when keywords are um, really being of use in this game because there are a few people or a few keywords that you know, if it wasn't the Avengers or the Guardians or the X-Men or whatever, it's kind of tough to um, make a deck around certain keywords. So and Psionic was one of them uh, because we only had Jean Grey. But now we have another Psionic. So hoping to see a bit more Psionics so that we can play more into it, um, because I know with um, uh what was it? The mystic like that one was one that wasn't given a lot of love because there wasn't a lot of mystics to play with. We only had Dr. Strange, Adam Warlock and Scarlet Witch and all three of them played completely different. So it was kind of hard to draft something around it. So I'm hoping that Psionic gets a bit of better treatment as we go forward. But with her um, alter ego ability, so her setup ability, put your two Psy energy upgrades into play Psy knife. Uh, side face up i'll get, get to that in just a second uh but they go right into play uh similarly to the way wolverine should have <laughs> been mentioned but we're past that uh so she have the action exhaust one side energy upgrade and you can shuffle one psionic card from your discard pile into your deck that makes me happy seeing that because that means that either all of the cards that she have will be psionic cards or they're looking to add in more psionic cards so that it can be more um, so that this ability won't be wasted specific to her cards. Right. So that'd be nice to see. And she got the six hand size, 10 hit points. So that's roughly about the average of what you expect from all of the heroes. And then her hero side, uh, she's a one, one, two, um, four hand size. Okay. That's, that's a little interesting. Psy energy control interrupt when you use one of Psylocke's basic abilities. Flip one Psy energy upgrade. Okay. Oh, defense. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So let's hop into it to see what's up. So hopefully 
there's a reason why they're low. <laughs> you see? All right. So here go. So this is the side knife. So she has two sides. So there's the side katana and the side knife. So um, in her side knife side, she gets plus one thwart. So if you have both of them up as side knives, she's now sitting at a, a three one two, which is kind of ridiculous. That's like Jean Grey level right there. Um, hero resource, exhaust side knife, generate a mental resource. You may flip this card. So, uh, I don't know if that's all a part of the right side of the arrow. If you just exhaust, you just get the resource and then you can flip it if need be. I don't, <laughs> I don't think there's a reason to keep flipping back and forth. Cause I don't think they ready themselves. I know she has a card that allows her to ready it. So I guess it depends on the situation that you're in. But yeah, that's that's nice to and it's and, oh it's not restricted. That's actually nice. So you can get some some aggression going around this if you wanted to. So you can have if you wanted to keep it in cyanide form, you can add another two uh weapons on top of that. So if you wanted to go God Slayer, uh Yarn Bjorn, um I think hand cannon is a restricted weapon. So it's she she has some uh variability when it comes to the or at least what it appears uh, for her to play um, aggression. She's got a lot that she can work with. Kind of nice. So we got the Psy Energy weapon. So the Katana side is restricted. So you got to watch yourself on that. So Psylocke gets plus one attack and her basic attacks gain piercing. If you've played the Mutant Genesis box, you know that this has a lot of value going on right now. Because they threw around Tufts like it was nothing. Uh, the hero resource, exhaust Psy Katana, you generate a physical resource, you may flip this card. Okay. So it's aggression versus uh, justice kind of style of play. Okay. So you can, man, that, that gives her so many options. Man, she might be another one that has some really cool deck, uh, deck building opportunities. Um, because I know aggression deals with a lot of physical and mental resources and even in justice like there's a few cards that work with physical resources so that okay all right i'm feeling it so far so you can either be depending on how you play she could just be a straight up two 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 uh three one two or a one three two so that's and that's a lot of variability with her that's super cool uh, Flurry of Blades, three cost event, a psionic attack, deal two damage to an enemy. For each Psy Knife you control, choose an enemy and confuse it. For each Psy Katana you control, choose an enemy and deal two damage to it. Ooh, okay. So it's either like a three for six damage, a three for four damage and a confuse. So it's practically like concussive blow kind of or you know if you're dealing with a uh an enemy that's steady this would be a for sure way to get a confuse off if you got both of your side knives up so okay all right i'm feeling it i like the variability of it you know for a three cost you know uh the world's your oyster in that particular way where you can you know you can you you have it go the way that you that you want it to go so that's all right, I'm feeling it. And plus, you know, with, with all of these uh, cars that have been coming out, I want to say they're all have been a part of the X-Men uh, cycle where you have uh, uh, cards that can like, like warrior skill, I think is the name of it, where you can increase the amount of damage on the card like that. There, There's ways to bolster this card if you think that it's not worth the three cost. <laughs> so I, I think that this. I think it's, it's it's a solid card just off of the variability alone, but for the versatility. Um, mental detection, two cost event, a psionic thwart. Uh, let's see, remove one threat from a scheme for each psi knife you control. Remove two additional threat from that scheme. So it's like a potential two for five, which is really good. For each psi katana you control, draw a card. So it could be two for one and draw two cards or... A two for three and draw a card. That's not bad. Yeah, like once again, like there's there's a lot of variability to it. 
because uh, this could could be a nice way to like knock off a threat uh because you can essentially like use both of her psi knives or psi katanas to pay for this card remove a threat um flip over now I, I guess you wouldn't be able to do that in paying for it Yeah, because you you'd have that opportunity. Uh, you won't. I don't think you because if assuming if that arrow does not include. Oh, let me go back to it so y'all can see my line of thinking. Because if you have that opportunity to flip at the moment that you use this, then you can really control how you want to play this card. But I mean, if you don't have that opportunity to control it, that's fine. Like that's, I I, I think that. The, the purpose that this serves is actually really good. So, yeah, she's got some really cool cards so far. Uh, Psionic Redirect. Hero Interrupt Defense. When you would take any amount of damage from an enemy attack, prevent two of that damage. For each Psy Katana you control, prevent two... Golly. Prevent two additional damage. For each Psy Knife you control, confuse that enemy. All right, so she's heavy in the Confuse Department, which I like. Which I really like because going down to alter ego scares me a lot of times. So this is nice to nice to know that she has like um she she has ways of getting down to alter ego if she needs to, which is all right. I'm feeling that. It's, it's either like blocking six damage for two, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, or you just block two and confuse the enemy. Because you can, if you know that this card is coming up or if you have it in your hand and not playing it for the turn, um, you can use a well one of the side katanas and turn it into a side knife. So maybe you have a knife and a katana. So you can block four damage and confuse the enemy with this, which is disgusting. And we got Angel. So he's a three cost. One, two, three. After you play Angel from your hand, Ready your identity. Oh, okay. So he's kind of like Lady Sif for Thor. Um, which would make sense since she's a four cost and does practically the same thing for Thor, but has two Thor. Okay. That's actually a really good signature. Out. <laughs> like looking at it, like that's a lot of value for what you get for that. That's that's a really good ally. All right. I'm down for it. So we got weapons training. It's a two cost upgrade. She gains retaliate. Nice. After Psylocke attacks, discard weapons training. Ready each weapon up. Ooh. Ooh, that's dangerous. Because, I mean, if, you, if you're if you looking to go the aggression route and you want to focus more on weapons that you get out of aggression, you can keep yourself uh, having the side knives out. And... You can attack somebody. So let's say you had like. Oh, what's the name of that card? God Slayer. And maybe Yorn Bjorn out. And you also got your side knives. So you can play something like. Fusa Yacht in your um, in your hand for five. Remove one of the um, you can like exhaust Yorn Bjorn. For, for the five damage attack with her with um uh what's the name of that god slayer so that's a decent amount of damage right there and then um use this card to ready everything back up like that would be kind of crazy especially if you have ways to to play those cards like that she could have some dangerous combos off of this i'm feeling that i'm feeling that Captain Britain, let's go. So we got, he's a four cost, three, three. Golly, that might be, <laughs> that's actually kind of crazy with the two consequentials. Fair enough. Uh, Excalibur, okay. So we got Captain Britain takes negative one consequential damage after he thwarts a side scheme or attacks a minion. Okay. This, this is actually a really good card because I think that, the 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 chances of of each round where you have either a minion or a side scheme out is relatively high um you know ever, ever since 
man, maybe. Well, I guess at some point this game had had villains that had a ton of minions because you look at both Claw and Ultron will always have something in front of you more times than not. Um, and as the game go along, the side schemes have gotten ridiculous. So, like, his value at this point in the game is extremely high. So you're attacking for three or thwarting for three, probably taking that one less consequential damage almost every single time he's out. And if you're playing multiplayer, you can have somebody that's in leadership that could put something on like um, a minion. I forget the name of that upgrade, but you can put that upgrade on the minion and you take another negative one consequential damage. So he's just out there attacking and, and thwarting for free, man. That's actually kind of nice. Um, <laughs> that's actually all right. Yeah, he's going to be good. Oh, I'm excited to see what people uh, end up doing with him. Concussive blow. That's what we come to learn and love about the game. Uh, has always been there. Psionic training. She ignores guard and patrol. Nice, nice. One cost. Uh, after Psylocke thwarts, discarded and confused an enemy. Yeah, she just got confuses on deck. That's ridiculous. Uh, Cypher. This is who I thought was potentially going to be in the... Um, the, the teaser that they had for the four characters, I thought he was going to be the guy with the trench coat, but that didn't, that ended up being Angel, but I'm all right with that. Uh, so Cypher is a two-cost ally, one thwart, one attack, and then two hit points. After Cypher attacks and damages a confused enemy, draw a card, tailor-made for uh, Psylocke. There's a, there's a few other heroes that can get some confuses off pretty, pretty easily, but... I mean, Justice has a ton of ways to be able to get an enemy confused, so you, you'll you be able to trigger this quite often. Upside the head, <laughs> one cost event. Uh, hero response, after your hero makes a basic attack and damages an enemy, confuse that enemy. If the enemy is already confused, stun it instead. Tailor made for, man, her pre-con deck might be one of the best ones we've seen in a long time, man. Like, these, these cards are amazing. Uh, float like a butterfly. So it's a two cost upgrade. Play under any player's control. Maximum player. When a character you control attacks a confused enemy, increase the amount of damage that attack deals to that enemy by one. Ooh, that's. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, this this just all blends together beautifully with what we've seen so far. That's gonna be a nice one to have. I like that. The power of the mind. Double the number of resources this card generates while paying for a psionic card. Um, I'm happy that they are deciding to do more of these uh, power of cards. I think that um, we've been seeing a lot of different attack and thwarting or even defense cards that's out. Uh, some of them have heinous amounts of uh, resources you have to pay for them. I think to have more cards that kind of ease that... Um, the cost of admission for some of those, I think, will help in that. And I think that could also help with um, the versatility of making decks. I think this, these kind of, it'd be nice to see some more uh, power of cards uh, come into play. Telepathy. So it's a psionic superpower. Play only if you're at a psionic trait. Nice. Hero action. Exhaust telepathy and spend two mental resources. Remove two threat from a scheme. That's kind of pricey, but plus the upfront cost is like paying three to remove two threat. And it, you have to be specific about those mental resources, too. Hmm. It's like a worse version of plan B, <laughs> but plan B, you have to choose a card by random and discard it, but it does two damage. Nah, let's see. I, I'm not a fan of that so far, but it's all right. And then later trap. Um, I probably should have done the X Force box first. Now that I think about it, <laughs> but um, if you're watching this and this is your first time seeing a card like this, so essentially the way that it works is it's a player side scheme. This would go in your deck. As you can see, it has the energy resource. It has a cost to put it down. So uh, what you would do. 
is uh, you pay the one cost and you play it out like it's a side scheme. The good thing is that you don't see anything crazy. Um, you don't see anything crazy for this. <laughs> you know, you don't see any hazard or crisis icons or anything like that. But um, or the advanced token ones. Um, but it is out there, and, and you you see it's, it's three three per person. But once you defeat that, as you can see, is when defeated, the player who defeated this scheme deals five per person damage to the villain. So it's essentially a one cost for five times X, X being the number of players, which is kind of ridiculous, just for the cost of however much threat that you have to, to remove from it. As we know with Psylocke, she has those side knives, right? So... If you have both of those side knives out, you play this and you remove that three threat, that's an instant five damage right there that, that's going to the villain. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of nice. I, I like I, I like the idea of this and it'll make more sense why they exist because of um, uh, uh, Cable. Because uh, this will go to the victory display once it's defeated. So, um, it is kind of a one one trick pony kind of thing. You put it out there, you defeat it get rid of it at least that's how i think it works compared to what i understand about cable cable will love this card but um yeah it's a uh, I, I like the idea of it it's it's kind of that next level to what we've seen with um those cosmic entity cards like the in between uh in betweener uh the gardener those cards that you can put that are player cards you play them and it goes into the encounter deck so whenever you draw them you do whatever their effect is and they're removed from the game. Or if you get it as a boost card, you know it's not going to have any boost icons. So it's a way to kind of add to the encounter deck and kind of help uh, minimize the nastiness in those decks. But this is a way for the player to be able to add side schemes and get some advantages off of them. And plus it double times as a way for Cable to get stronger. So I like the idea of it. But yeah, that's Psylocke. I like the idea of her character. I think it's going to be interesting trying to maneuver around that forehand size, but because she have those resource generators that she start off with at the early, at the beginning of the of the game, that helps her with. She's already ahead of the curve resource uh, resource wise. She's probably going to be flipping a lot. So if you play aggression or if you play. Um, you know, whatever uh, aspect that you play, it might be smart to add in those cards that give you advantages whenever you flip. Uh, similarly, well, I won't say similarly, but for example, um, Moxie in leadership, where she flips over, it's a zero cost for her to gain uh, one, one, one stats. So there's um, Perseverance with uh, Protection, which when you flip up, you pay... Uh, pay one resource to be able to get a tough uh, so on and so forth with aggression and justice so I think that she has a lot of uh, I, I think she's going to be phenomenal in justice and aggression um, I think protection you can get a little creative with her and make her pretty strong in, in uh, protection and leadership I mean as long as they continue to support X-Force cards I think X-Force will eventually get strong. I don't know that there's a lot of strong actions with leadership with um, uh, uh, X-Force so far, but we'll see. Time will tell. We still got plenty of time throughout the rest of the year to be able to see what they release. But in the meantime, I love, I'm love. i loving what I'm seeing from her. I think she's going to be pretty fun to play. I think that she has a lot to offer. She's definitely, for somebody that likes theory crafting in this game, she's definitely going to be able to um, kind of mentally stimulate um somebody that really loves deck building and theory crafted in this game so yeah i think she's going to be a strong character right now this is like a level um material at least <laughs> for for marvel champions but let me know what y'all think in the comments i think that she's going to be super fun uh another justice heavy ca uh, character potentially another aggression heavy character um with a little bit of variability and in, in protection and leadership it just is what it is so um yeah let me know what y'all think once again this is maurice um coming with another video and thank you for your time